So here in this question, we're given figure three. And it is a curve which has parametric equations, x is equal to six sine t, and y is equal to five sine two t. And we know that this is for values of t between zero and pi over two. We're shown that the region r, which is shown here shaded in figure three, is bounded by the curve and the x-axis. In this question, we're asked to show that the area of r is given by the following integral. So we have from limits 0 to pi over 2, the integral 6t multiplied by sine t multiplied by cos squared t, and we're integrating with respect to t. So in a question like this, where we're presented with parametric equations, we're going to use the equation here. We're going to have that the shaded region r is equal to y is a function of x, and we integrate with respect to x with our limits in x. So another way we can write this is say that we'll now have limits t2 and t1 and we're going to have y but this time it's going to be in terms of t and then we're going to multiply that by dx by dt and we're integrating by d of t. So what we're going to notice at the side here we have that y of t is equal to for our case, it's going to be equal to y, which is equal to 5 sine of 2t. And then we're going to have that x is equal to 6 sine t. So therefore, we differentiate this and we have that dx by dt is going to be equal to... So how do we differentiate 6 sine t? That is going to differentiate to 6 cos of t. So then we can take these t equations here and substitute these into our integral here. So just doing that, we'll then have that, leaving our integral in terms of the limits t2 and t1, we'll have 6 cos of t, and we're going to multiply that by 5 sine of 2t, and we're still integrating with respect to t. And then we can say next that this will remain the same, t2, t1, and we can multiply the two constants, 6 and 5, together. So that will leave us with 30 lots of cos of t multiplied by sine of 2t. So you may recall we have the following trig identity, where we have that sine of 2t is going to be equal to 2 lots of sine t multiplied by cos of t. So what we'll do here is we'll use this trig equation and substitute this into our integral here. So continuing this on, our integral limits remain the same and we're now going to have 30 lots of cos of t multiplied by 2 sine t multiplied by cos of t. And moving along to the side now, we can uh, multiply this into something which looks quite similar to what we're after, where our limits again remain the same. We this time have constants 30 and 2, so we can multiply them together, which gives us 60. And we then have cos of t multiplied by cos of t, which will give us cos squared t, and then we still have our sine t. And then looking back at the question, this is exactly what we were after. And then we have here that therefore our limits, we have that t1 is going to be equal to 0 and t2 is going to be equal to pi over 2. So how do we know this? We know this from the question where we're given the range of t values here. So therefore we have our limits. And what we can then say is that the region r is going to be equal to the integral of pi over 2 and 0. And we have 60. And then we're going to swap around the cos and the sine here just because that's what the question asks us to show. So we'll have 60 multiplied by sine t multiplied by cos squared t, and we're integrating with respect to t. So therefore, we've completed this question as we have shown the required form of the integral. This question was worth three marks, and we're going to take a look and see where we've picked up our marks. So we receive our first mark when we got our integral into this form here. So that was saying we knew how to use this formula here and by substituting our values, which included differentiating our parametric equation x. And then receive our second mark for when we had the integral correct and we just had to put in our limits 
And then we receive our third and final mark for identifying the limit correctly and concluding with a required result. So in the second part of part A of this question, we're asked to show by algebraic integration that the area of R is exactly 20. So essentially what we're being asked to do here is to take our integral from part A and we're to use our knowledge of integration to solve this. So the first step we're going to make here is we're going to pull out 60, our constant, from the integral. So you can see we have 60 here and we can pull it out. So we're going to have 60 and we're going to multiply it by our integral, our limits stay the same. And what else we can do? Well, we'll have then sine t. But to make this simpler, we want to make this cos t into something which is in terms of sine 2. So we know that cos squared of t is going to be equal to 1 minus sine squared t. So what we can do is we can substitute this in and we'll use brackets. So we'll have 1 minus sine squared t dt. So then this is going to be equal to 60 and our integral stays the same, pi over 2. So our limits remain. And then we'll have sine t multiplied by 1, which is sine t. And we're going to subtract sine t multiplied by sine t squared. And that is going to be equal to sine cubed t integrating with respect to t. So just as a side note here, we can then do our kind of sub integral. So we'll have that sine t with respect to t is going to integrate to negative cos of t. Then we would have a constant. And likewise, we'll have the uh, negative sine cubed t integrated with respect to dt is going to be equal to positive cos t. And we subtract 1 over 3 lots of cos cubed t. And then we have a constant of integration also. But remember, we don't actually need to include the constant of integration in here because we're going to be evaluating it directly using the limits. So this means we're going to have 60 lots of, so what we do actually see is we have a negative cos t and a positive cos t, so they'll cancel out, which is going to leave us with negative 1 over 3 cos cubed t, and then what we'll do is we'll have pi over 2 and 0. So then what is this going to equal? So we'll have 60 multiplied by negative 1 over 3 cos cubed pi over 2. And then we'll subtract negative 1 over 3 cos cubed 0. And then we'll close these brackets here. So we therefore have a value in this that r is going to be equal to 60. And we multiply this by negative 1 over 3 cos cubed pi over 2, which is equal to 0. And then we're going to have that when we substitute 0 in here, that is going to give us negative 1 over 3. So we subtract negative 1 over 3. So we actually have that then r is going to be equal to 60 lots of 1 over 3, which is going to be equal to 20. And that is the answer the question asked for. So we'll then write in as required. So looking back, this question was worth three marks and we achieve our first mark when we got our uh, integral into a form where we could integrate. So that was at this point here that we'll get this mark. We then receive our second mark for integrating correctly. Then we receive our third and final mark for then using the limits correctly and concluding with the correct answer, which was showing that r was equal to 20 units. So in the next part of this question, we're given some further information, including this diagram, figure four. We're told that part of the curve is used to model the profile of a small dam. And that's shown in the figure. And using the model, and given that we're told that x and y are both in meters, we're told that the vertical wall of the dam is 4.2 meters high. So we can see that here, 4.2 meters from the y equals zero to the dam vertical point here and then we're also told that there's a horizontal walkway of width mn along the top of the dam and we are asked to calculate the width of the walkway so i.e the length from m to n 
So to begin with, uh, we're going to have a think about the information we have already. So we know that x is equal to 6 sine t and y is equal to 5 sine 2t. So we know that when y is equal to 4.2, which is the height of the wall, we can find t using this equation for y. So therefore, writing this down, when y is equal to 4.2, we have that 4.2 is equal to 5 lots of sine 2t. So therefore, we can say, rearranging this, we can say that sine 2t is equal to 4.2 over 5. And then we can find 2t by doing sine negative 1 of 4.2 over 5. And then we can find t by taking this value and dividing it by 2. So we put this into our calculator, sine negative 1 of 4.2 over 5, and we divide by 2. And this gives us that t is going to be equal to 0 0.49. 8, 6, 5, and so on. So therefore, we use our knowledge of cast diagrams, and here we're working in radians. So we have all in sine. So we need to work back this way. So we also have, and our second t value, so we'll say that this is t1, and we have that t2 is going to be equal to, well, we'll have pi, Minus, now we need to multiply it by 2 this time because we were originally had 2t. So pi minus 2 lots of t1, which is going to be equal to pi minus 2 times 0 0.49865, which is equal to 1.0721. So therefore we have one value of t and we have our second value of t here. So now we can use these two values of t to find values of x. So therefore, we have that x1 is going to be equal to, and well, we have our equation of x here, so it's going to be 6 sine lots of t1, and we know that t1 is equal to 0 0.49865, and putting this into our calculator, this comes out as 2.869, rounded to three decimal places, and we also have that x2 is going to be equal to 6 sine lots of our value t2, which is equal to 1.0721. And again, putting this into our calculator, this comes out as 5.269. And that's the three decimal places as well. So from this, we can work out the width of the path. So we can write here that the width of the path is going to be, well, what is it going to be? So it's going to be the difference between x2 and x1. So I'll have x2 minus x1, which is equal to 5.269 minus 2.869, which is equal to 2.4. Zero meters. So therefore we found the width of the path and it's going to be 2.4 meters and we've completed this question. There was five marks available here and we achieved our first mark when we got to this stage here where we had sine 2t was equal to 4.2 over 5. We then achieved our second mark for getting both our values of t1 and t2. We receive our third mark for attempting to find the x values of both t values. So we'll give our third mark for the attempt to find the values of x here. And then we receive our fourth mark for having correct values of x. So we'll write that in there. And then we receive our fifth and final mark for being able to work out the width by doing x2 minus x1 and concluding correctly that the answer was 2.4 metres.